Hello, and welcome back to another semester of Ethan's Engineering videos. This time, uh, this time around, you know, this semester, instead of doing videos for material and energy balances, we actually have two classes that we're going to be doing engineering videos for. The first one being Transport 1, which is definitely going to be significantly Blackboard based. And the second is going to be for Computational Methods, which is a chemical engineering course that's a bit higher level. Uh, and it's mostly about coding, so we're probably not going to be here too much, um, but we will definitely be doing videos for both. So to get started for our first video of this year, Homework 1, Part 1, we're going to be talking about colet viscometers and the equality of torque between the inner and outer cylinders. Now you're probably wondering, if you aren't from our class, um, what is a colet viscometer and what do we mean by cylinders? So to start, I figure I'm going to start drawing one and then we can go from there with the definitions onto the stuff that we've been given to prove that the there's an equality between the torque on the inner and the outer cylinders. So, what is a colet viscometer? Well, I'm going to probably move off the screen a little bit here so you can see as I'm drawing. A colet viscometer uh, is a set of two cylinders inside of the other. Uh, I'm going to draw the outer one first with a flat bottom because I'm lazy. And then inside of that, there is an inner cylinder right there with a gap in between the two. Uh, now this inner cylinder comes down. Uh, let me just draw it straight in here. It does something like this. Gets a little air pocket and then comes up. Da, 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 like that, um, and then there's a motor attached to the inner cylinder. Now, uh, the inner cylinder for this example is going to have a radius of Ri, and the outer cylinder, which I'm going to draw this way, is going to have a radius of capital R, just to make it easy to distinguish them, um, even if you can't really see the little i, if it's a little r, it's going to be lowercase r, if it's a capital R, it's going to be our outer cylinder's radius, um, and if it's a little r without any little squiggle that you can't read either way, um, that's just going to be any radius between uh, you know, zero and capital R, but for, for all intents and purposes, between Ri and capital R. Um, so anyway, this is our viscometer here, um, and in it we have a bunch of liquid. Uh, that's all an air pocket right there. Uh, here's air. So anyway, what's going to happen is our motor up top is going to apply a torque to the inner cylinder, which we're going to call uh, this thing that looks kind of like a P, but it's just really a fancy T uh, torque right there, and that torque is going to be exerted on the inner cylinder and it's going to spin. Now we're going to be, um, you know, holding, not necessarily holding, but our outer plate for this to measure viscosity correctly needs to be um, standing still, essentially. Um, but obviously there's still going to be a torque exerted on it through the fluid, because as this spins, uh, because fluids have viscosity, which is of course what the whole point of this device is to measure, um, as the inner cylinder spins it will drag the fluid around with it. Uh, and as the fluid is dragged around, it will also exert a torque on the outer cylinder. So again, what we're trying to prove today is that the torque on the inner cylinder is equal to the torque on the outer cylinder when you account for the difference in radius from the motor that's spinning. Um, so to get started with that, we have to talk about Newton's law of viscosity. Now Newton's law of viscosity, I'm just going to abbreviate to Newton, NLV, right here. Newton's law of viscosity is actually pretty simple, and it only applies to fluids which follow Newton's law of viscosity. So not much of a law, um, but anyway, Newton's law of viscosity is that the shear force, which we're going to use as tau, is equal to the viscosity of the fluid, and that's going to be mu, and then the shear rate of the fluid. Now in regular Cartesian coordinates, the shear rate of a fluid um, would simply be um, the derivative of the velocity profile, which tells you basically how does the velocity of the fluid change between a stable non-moving plate and a moving plate as you go from one end to the other of the fluid. Of course that assumes you're following the no-slip boundary condition, but you know that's a whole other can of worms. If you're here I'm assuming you know what that is, uh, but if you don't, the no-slip boundary condition just means the fluid that is touching a surface is moving at the same speed as its surface. So if the surface isn't moving, the fluid directly touching that surface is not moving, and if a surface is moving at a velocity of v meters per second, the fluid is also moving at v meters per second, and of course there's going to be a, somehow between the ends of the fluid, you're going to have to get from one to the other. Anyway, back to Newton's law of viscosity, we know that the shear force is equal to mu, the viscosity, times the shear rate. Now because we're working with cylinders, and we're not going to be able to truly approximate it to be Cartesian, um, even if you know, even if we could, which there are ways to do it, but it's inaccurate. So we're given all of this information up here, which tells us where, what uh, the shear rate is actually calculated as for the cylinder situation. 
So we have, instead of it just being the derivative of v theta, it's going to be the derivative of v theta divided by whatever radius we're looking at. And then after we've done the derivation, we're going to then find, multiply the radius back in. And then this is v theta for our cylinder system, where we have uh, omega, which is going to be our angular velocity radians per second times k, where k is this, is basically the ratio between the outer and inner cylinder. Um, so it's gonna be omega times k squared, divided by one minus k squared, all that multiplied by the big radius over whatever radius we're interested in, minus that radius. There we go. So, our equality of torque starts with Newton's law of motion. I know it's like the third time we've come back to it, but believe me, it's kind of important. So, why, why is this important? Well, because we can actually use shear force to kind of equate ourselves with torque. And the reason we can do that is because shear force is actually a measure of whatever force is applied to our surface over the area of our surface. So again, um, I'll just start leaving down some measurements here uh, for a cylinder of height h and a radius of ri, since the inner circle is the one that's exhibiting the torque from the motor, um, it'd be whatever the surface area, so surface area of cylinder inner. So whatever the surface area is of that inner cylinder against the water, that is going to be the area over which the torque is applied to the water. And the reason that I'm saying torque and not force is because torque is just force at a distance. In the same way that work is force over a distance and has units of, of joules, um, torque is force at a distance. So because of that, we can actually, uh, well, first we're gonna rewrite this as um, force is equal to, so we just multiply the area over, because again, these two are the same thing, force over an area. So force is going to be equal to mu, uh, and then, which is again, viscosity, and this is going to be our shear rate, and then we're going to have the area of the surface, which is the cylinder, but we'll break that down further later. So now that we have force, again, we're gonna talk about torque. We said before that torque, so I'll draw here torque, is just equal to, um, is equal to some force, at force the torque at r is equal to some force at radius r. So obviously if we want to bring torque into the equation, if we multiply both sides by r, we can replace force, you know, after multiplying it by the radius with torque. So we can rewrite this as the torque is equal to the viscosity times the shear rate times the area of the surface times the radius from the center of the motor's spinner that the torque is being acted upon that area. So this is going to be our like starting formula right here for our torque equality ratio. Um, but now obviously the next thing we have to do is we want to get everything in terms of r since that's going to be our one variable. Since we're looking at both the inner and the outer radius, you know, we need to know the difference in torque between those two places. Now this is a viscosity of the fluid which is constant. The area of the cylinder um, is going to be different depending on the radius, but again, we're going to break that down in a second when we get down to it. And then obviously the radius is the variable we want everything in terms of. So the big kind of a stickler right now is going to be our shear rate, which again is, if you remember the derivative, which is of the angular, angular velocity divided by the radius we're looking at, the derivative of that multiplied by the radius we're looking at once again. So we're going to have to figure that out twice for whichever one we're looking at, the inner or the outer cylinder. So that's why we're going to do it right now by solving for this uh, in cases of all r, and then from there we can plug in the inner and outer radius, plug that back in over here, and then hopefully everything will be just PG. So we're going to start with this derivation right here, so I'm just going to go through it part by part. So the first thing we want to do is divide by r, that's pretty easy. So v theta divided by r is equal to, well, you know, we only have one r, so we don't need to worry about this since there's no r in it particularly. And right here there is an r, so we can just write this as equal to omega k squared over 1 minus k squared times r squared over r squared minus 1, right there. And now all we have to do is take the derivative of that. So this all right here is one constant, because again, k is just some ratio, the ratio between the inner and outer uh, radius of our circles. So when we take the derivative of that, d over dr of v theta divided by r, this is just going to be pulled out with us. So we're going to have again omega k squared over 1 minus k squared. And then here is going to be the actual kind of derivative part. So we take um, this right here. Obviously, the derivative of, of negative 1 is just going to be 
is zero because it's a constant, so we don't worry about that. So we look at this, the derivative of this. Well, again, this is a constant, so this is going to stay there. So it's still going to be r squared on top. And the derivative of r to the negative 2 is going to be r to the negative 3 with a negative 2 out front. So we're going to add a negative 2 over here and then r to the third on the bottom. Because again, when you take the derivative of an exponent, it gets bumped down one. So there we go. And now we're going to multiply by r. So if we do r d over dr times v theta over r is equal to, well, again, if we multiply by r, all that's going to do is decrease the power on the bottom of the fraction by 1. So it's going to be equal to negative 2 omega k squared over 1 minus k squared of um, capital R squared over R squared. Where capital R is, again, the large radius of our larger, the radius of our larger cylinder, and this is any radius. So here I'm going to write um, theta as a function of r is equal to this, which is equal to that. So right here, this is our, this will tell us our shear rate for any radius um, of, you know, either one of those two sizes of cylinders. So what we're going to do now um, is we're going to use this to kind of rewrite this in both terms of capital R and Ri so that we can set them and check to see if they are equal to each other. So we're going to do that right here in the middle. So the first thing we're going to do is say, um, torque of R is equal to Ri is going to be equal to, well, the viscosity of the fluid, which doesn't change, the torque, I mean, the shear rate of Ri. So if we plug Ri into this, we see we have R squared over Ri squared. And if we look at that, if we think about that for a second, we realize that because K is equal to R, K times R is equal to Ri, again, it's a, it's a ratio, if we were to, um, if we were to, divide r over right there, it would be the inverse of k. So um, ri over ri over r is equal to k. So since this is flipped over, this is essentially k to the negative 2, which directly cancels out this k right here. So because with lowercase ri, these k cancels out, um, our shear rate is just going to be and again, since I forgot to mention this earlier, but the negative is a matter of direction when you consider clockwise or counterclockwise, uh, positive or negative. So we're just going to ignore the negative sign for now because that's all just a matter of subjective and, and it just doesn't matter because whichever one we pick, it will be negative or positive for both of them. So I'm just going to pick positive so I can ignore it. So it's going to be 2 omega, we remember those, that k on the top cancels, over 1 minus k squared. Because again, by putting ri on here, that makes it the inverse of k, k's cancel. Uh, then we're going to multiply that by the area. So the area of the small cylinder, because again, this is r is equal to ri, we know that the surface area, the area of the small cylinder is going to be 2 pi ri, uh, and then that's going to be the circumference times the height of the cylinder, so that's h. And then the last thing we need is the radius itself, which is going to be, again, ri. Now we want to see, is this equal to the torque for uh, let me write this, torque for R is equal to capital R, which is going to be equal to, again, we're going to plug capital R in here. That's just going to cancel and go away because capital R squared over capital R squared is 1. So we're going to have is viscosity. The shear rate is going to be 2 omega k squared over 1 minus k squared times 2 pi R capital R H and then capital R. And that just double checking, that should be everything. So now all we're going to do is just set these directly equal to each other, cancel out what we can, and see if they're equal or not. So first thing we can do is, I'll just rewrite them down here a bit bigger so you can see them. Um, yeah, I'll rewrite them. So mu 2 omega 1 minus k squared 2 pi r i h r i is equal to mu 2 omega k squared, 1 minus k squared, 2 pi capital R, h capital R. So the first thing that's really obvious is the mu's, the viscosity doesn't matter, so we can cancel those. Uh, the next thing is the 2 omega is on both sides, so we can cancel that out. Uh, next thing is 1 over k squared, that's on both of them, so we can cancel that. Um, and then 2 pi is on both of these for the, the area right there, so we can cancel that. So I'll rewrite it as it is written right now. Oh, and h cancels, but I'll leave it in there for now. So we have r, i, h, because everything on the left side canceled on the left side, uh, of r, i is equal to, we have k squared 
um, parentheses, R, H, R. So obviously, yeah, as I said, those H's cancel, so we can get rid of those. So now if we combine our R's on both sides, we have R, I squared is equal to K squared times capital R squared. So, I mean, obviously what we're looking at is saying the small radius is equal to K squared times the big radius squared, which at first may not seem like it fits, but if we take the square root of both of these, we get R of I is equal to K R, which we can do since they're all squared, you just take the square root of all three of them. And what we notice right here with this final result is that by definition, it must be true because all the way over here, if we look at our definition, K times R must equal R I. And that's what we've gotten right here. We've gotten the small radius is equal to R times the proportion that connects the radius of the two cylinders. So by definition, this must be true, which means this equality is in fact true, and our two torques are equal to each other. So with that, that's a Q, E, D right there. Our torques are equal, and our collet cylinder um, follows the conservation of torque and angular momentum. So with that, thank you, and have a great evening.